Three years ago today, right in the aftermath of the most secure election in world history, you might remember that another election was held. This was a special Senate election in the state of Georgia, wherein both of their two Senate seats were up for grabs. It was basically a runoff election because no candidate had gotten 50% of the vote. And so while the presidential election took place on November 3rd of 2020, the special Georgia runoff election took place on January 5th of 2021. And in that two month interim period between the two elections, an organization called True the Vote was working to clean up the voter rolls over in the state of Georgia. Specifically, during this window of time, quote, True the Vote, its founder Catherine Engelbrecht and several others had raised questions about whether 364,000 Georgia voters were improperly registered because their voter registrations conflicted with their mailing addresses. Essentially, what this organization did was that they compared the mailing data that they had on hand with the data that was on the official voter rolls in the state. And they found discrepancies in the form of people not living, allegedly not living in the state and the county where they were registered to vote. And so what this organization did was that they helped people at the local level file election challenges. Quote, Georgia law requires that voter challenges be made by other voters living in the same county. As two Georgia runoff elections, which were believed could determine control of the U.S. Senate, approached on January 5th of 2021, True the Vote narrowed its challenge list to about 39,000, eliminating those with a legitimate reason to live elsewhere, such as college students and active duty military. They then found volunteers to make challenges in about 40 of Georgia's 159 counties. Meaning that because there was not enough time before the actual election, they narrowed down their list to just 39,000 names, people whose addresses they believed were different from what was on the voter roll books. They then not only helped the people at the local level file the actual challenges, but also, quote, True the Vote offered bounties from a $1 million reward fund for evidence of election malfeasance and sought to recruit citizen monitors to patrol polls and ballot drop-off locations. Essentially, they were recruiting people to monitor ballot drop boxes as well as paying people bounties if they were able to provide evidence of election wrongdoing. Now, as a practical matter, their efforts in this particular election did not really bear much fruit. The voter roll challenges did not really go anywhere. And in the end, the two Democrat candidates, John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, they wound up winning the Senate runoff elections. However, this is where the story you can say took on a bit of a twist. That's because this right here is Miss Stacey Abrams. She is a Democrat who ran multiple unsuccessful campaigns for Georgia governor. And this is Fair Fight Incorporated, an organization that Miss Stacey Abrams founded. And what happened after the runoff election is that Fair Fight Incorporated filed a lawsuit against True the Vote on behalf of several residents of Georgia. Their claim was that by questioning the voter rolls and by helping local Georgians to question the authenticity of the voter rolls, True the Vote was engaging in an act of voter support. Suppression. According to their lawsuit, Fair Fight made the argument that, quote, finding actual fraud or ineligible voters was only a secondary concern for True the Vote, and that the real intention was to frighten Democrat leaning voters from turning out in what were expected to be razor thin runoff elections that would determine control of the United States Senate. Essentially, at the heart of the argument is that the Stacey Abrams founded organization was making the claim that by questioning the validity of the voter rolls, True the Vote was actually in violation of the Voting Rights Act. And just for your reference, the specific part of that law that they claim was being violated was section 11, subsection two, which reads this, quote, no person, whether acting under color of law or otherwise, shall intimidate, threaten, or coerce, or attempt to intimidate, threaten, or coerce any person for voting or attempting to vote. And so you see, on the one hand, the argument was that the social media posts, articles, and podcast appearances by True the Vote urging people to challenge the voter rolls constituted a form of voter suppression. On the other hand, though, True the Vote's legal team was making the counter argument that their actions, including their search for illegal votes, was fully protected under the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And so these were the two competing arguments in the case, which plotted along in the legal system for about three years before finally getting to trial. Now, eventually, the case did make it to trial. And after hearing both sides and considering the merits of the case, the judge ruled in favor of True the Vote. Specifically, in a fairly thick 145-page ruling, Judge Stephen Jones, who was appointed to the bench by Barack Obama, he ruled that this effort to challenge challenged the eligibility of hundreds of thousands of Georgia voters did not violate the Voting Rights Act. Here is part of what he wrote, quote, Having heard the evidence presented and the arguments made by the parties, the court maintains its prior concerns about the manner in which True the Vote utilized Georgia law to challenge individual voters. The court, however, ultimately concludes that, as a legal matter, the plaintiffs have not carried their burden to show a violation of Section 11B of the Voting Rights Act. The court enters judgment in favor of True the Vote. There is no evidence that True the Vote attempted to make any of the voters in this case feel timid or fearful or that they experienced any actual reasonable intimidation. Essentially, what the judge 
judge determined here was that, for one, when True the Vote was using these social media posts, these articles, and these podcasts to urge people to challenge the voter rolls, they were not trying to intimidate the voters themselves, since it's even dubious whether those voters themselves would have even known about the existence of these articles and these podcasts. And then secondly, the judge found that these calls to action were protected speech under the First Amendment. Now, as you would imagine, the defendants in the case were thrilled with the ruling, with Ms. Catherine Engelbrecht, who is the founder of True the Vote, releasing this video as a response. And just for your reference, I'm going to speed up the video just a little bit so we can get through it faster. Hey, everybody, it's Catherine Engelbrecht with True the Vote, bringing you a great bit of breaking news. We've just learned from the Northern District Court of Georgia that the judge has rendered a decision in the case Fair Fight v. True the Vote. And that decision is that we have been fully vindicated. Today is a great day for America. Today is a great day for trustworthy elections. You see, we were sued by Fair Fight back in December of 2020 when we endeavored to help Georgia citizens file lawful elector challenges, basically asking their counties to take a look at the voter records because it would seem, based on data that we could provide to them, uh, it would seem that many of those voters, in fact, some 364,000, according to our data, had moved from either the county or state where that voter was registered. And so, in so doing, we drew a lawsuit from Fair Fight, and we have been um, battling it out for three years. Today, I am thrilled to tell you that the court has decided in our favor in full. We've beaten Stacey Abrams, Fair Fight, Mark Elias and his law firm and his gaggle of attorneys and the Department of Justice. Thank you to all of you who stood so steadfastly by us through these tumultuous times. And there, there were some difficult moments along this journey, many, many changes, but we have uh, continued to stand stand strong knowing that it is it is right it is not only right it is necessary for citizens to stand for lawful elections for trustworthy elections and today is a great example of why we should continue justice has been served thank you all god bless each and every one of you and god bless america on the flip side however you have fair fight incorporated the stacy abrams organization releasing a lengthy statement of their own saying that the federal courts have failed to protect voting rights here's part of what they wrote in their statement quote while there is much to make of the court's 145 page opinion fair fight is disappointed that georgians and voters nationwide must continue to wait for our federal courts to impose accountability in the face of widespread and mounting voter intimidation efforts now it's unclear as of today whether they will be appealing this decision meaning that as a practical matter, heading into the 2024 election, the question of whether or not Americans can challenge a state's voter rolls, well, it's been adjudicated in the affirmative, that broadly looking for illegal voters does not constitute a form of voter suppression. If you'd like to read this judge's ruling for yourself, I'll throw a link to the PDF version of it. It'll be down in the description box below, which as I should mention, that description box right below those like and subscribe buttons, both of which I hope you take a quick moment to smash so that this content can reach ever more people via the YouTube algorithm. Now, let me quickly introduce today's sponsor by showing you this little piece of money. Or rather, I should say that this is fake money being printed into oblivion by those geniuses over in Washington, D.C. And so before they completely obliterate your life savings, what I recommend you do is to convert that fake money into real money, which is physical gold and silver. And the best company to use is the sponsor of today's episode, American Hartford Gold who also happens to be my own personal gold and silver bullion dealer. They have thousands of other five-star ratings across the country. They have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. They ship quickly, directly to your doorstep. Their product listings are awesome. They're stacked with great options of gold and silver bullion and coins, and they have amazing customer service. When you pick up the phone and call them, you feel good knowing you support a company that supports the truth getting out into the wider American audience. And so calling them up is a no-brainer. But best of all, if you tell them that Roman sent you, they will throw in up to $5,000 worth of free silver with your first purchase. It's 866-242-2352, or you can simply text the word Roman, R-O-M-A-N, Roman, to 65532. Of course, all their details will be down in the description box below. And now, let's head on back to the studio. And now lastly, if you watch this episode and you're thinking to yourself, man, I love this content, I just wish Roman would put out more episodes every single week. Well, you're in luck, because I do. Over on Epic TV, our awesome no censorship video platform, I publish somewhere between one to three exclusive episodes of Facts Matter every single week, usually on topics that unfortunately can be discussed here on YouTube, like vaccine injuries, toxic seed oils, election irregularities, among many, many other topics that, again, unfortunately cannot be published here on YouTube, despite those episodes being 100% fact-based and properly sourced. 
Well, that is just the reality of the world that we're living in. And so if you'd like to check out that content, you're in luck because the Epic Times is right now running an awesome promo. 25 cents a week for the whole year, which if you do the math, works itself out to just be a single dollar a month. This is a great trial subscription. You can just come in, check out the content, spend very little money, see if you actually like it, and if you do, well, you can be a subscriber for a long, long, long time to come. That's the plan, to get you in the door, checking out the content, and hopefully being a subscriber for years or perhaps even decades. If you want to take advantage of that sale, the link will be right there at the top of the description box below. You can just click on that link, and it'll take you to the sale page where you can try the Epic Times for, again, just a single dollar a month. Hope you check it out, and I hope that you join us over on Epic Times' website and the Epic TV platform. And then, until next time, I'm your host, Roman, from the Epic Times. Stay informed, and most importantly, stay free. Mm -hmm.